All right. <clears throat> if you're looking for some of the security updates we've implemented in our AIML services over the past year, along the categories in our well-architected framework of identity and access management, detection, infrastructure protection, and data protection, you're in the right spot. I'm Shelby Eigenbrod, and I'm an AIML Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. I work with customers from some of the most heavily regulated industries, but whether you are in financial services or you're building the next big app as a startup, security is still key to every machine learning workload. Today, I'm going to walk you through, through a few things. We'll first look at some common patterns and considerations in these categories within the well-architected that aren't necessarily new, but you may find beneficial in adding to your environments and your workloads today. But then we'll also talk about some of the new features and services that were implemented last year that you can use to add and streamline your existing security controls in your machine learning workloads. Let's take a quick look at our agenda. First, we'll do a brief introduction into AWS security and talk about the scope of our discussion for today. Then we'll move into general security patterns and considerations, as well as the updates from 2020 for our AI and ML services. Finally, we'll take a brief look at what's ahead. So let's get started. You've probably seen this slide before, but this is our machine learning stack on AWS, where we have our infrastructure and frameworks layer at the bottom of the stack. Then as you move up the stack, we have our ML services in the middle, and our AI services at the top of the stack. Each layer has different levels of managed services and features within those services. For any AWS workload, the same holds true. We look after the security of the cloud and customers are responsible for security in the cloud. AWS responsibility of security in the cloud or of the cloud means AWS is responsible for protecting the infrastructure that runs all of the services offered in the AWS cloud. The infrastructure is composed of hardware, software, networking, and the physical facilities that run the AWS cloud. The customer responsibility of security in the cloud means that while we provide the tools and features that allow you to secure your workloads on AWS, it's still the customer's responsibility to implement and configure those features. However, customer responsibility will also be determined by the AWS cloud services that they choose to use and which the customer selects. So service selection actually determines the amount of configuration that a customer must perform as their part of the security responsibility. As an example, at the frameworks and infrastructure layer, if a customer is hosting their machine learning workloads on EC2, the customer is responsible for patching the operating system on those EC2 services or servers that are being used to actually host those models. However, as you move up the stack to some of our ML services or AI services, Managed services typically, typically take care of that OS level patching for the customer. As you can imagine, it would be really difficult to cover this full stack in a 30 minute session. So for today, we're gonna to primarily focus on our ML services and our AI services. It's even really tough to give full justice to our AI services within 30 minutes. So we'll focus a bit more on the SageMaker layer and talk about a few updates as well within our AI services as we go. So Amazon SageMaker sits inside the ML services layer and it provides our end-to-end -end machine learning services for building, training, deploying, and operating machine learning workloads. For those that may be unfamiliar with some of the built-in security benefits with SageMaker, we'll cover a few here before diving into some of the security considerations and new features that we'll discuss later. First, SageMaker offers built-in security frameworks or features covering network security, authentication and authorization, and data protection. For network security, all requests to the SageMaker API and console are made over a secure SSL connection. In addition, all SageMaker API operations are supported through AWS Private Link, meaning that the traffic can be forced through private connectivity so that it's not traversing the internet, which reduces the exposure to threats such as brute force attacks or even denial of service attacks. For authentication and authorization, Amazon SageMaker allows you to implement fine-grained asset access controls following the principles of least privilege, and we'll take a little bit more deeper look at these in a few slides. Finally, SageMaker provides the mechanisms to easily encrypt your data in transit and at rest, and the majority of the services within SageMaker support the additional ability to also bring your own customer managed keys as well. 
So SageMaker also off offers several built-in model governance features um, in the areas of auditability, artifact management, model explainability, and model monitor. SageMaker provides the mechanisms to allow customers to set up end-to-end -end audit auditability, as well as to ensure that your artifacts are protected as part of your artifact management strategy. SageMaker also provides model explainability. So, and we'll cover that in a few slides as well and dive a little bit deeper there. And finally, we have capabilities that allow you to monitor your model for signals that the model is degrading over time. And this is done through Amazon SageMaker Model Monitor, and we'll cover that one a little bit more here as well. So now that we've kind of set the scope for the session, as well as highlighted some of the SageMaker high-level security features and capabilities, we're going to now dive into some of the announcements and new capabilities related to security that were announced in 2020 for our AI and ML services. First, we'll start with a new key asset that was added to the AWS Well Architected Framework. It was announced in 2020. And for those that are unfamiliar with the AWS Well Architected Framework, um, this is a framework that has existed for a while. Um, and the framework was developed to provide a consistent approach for customers and AWS partners to regularly evaluate their architectures against general design principles as well as AWS best practices. The framework consists of five pillars, including operational excellence, security, reliability, performance efficiency, and cost optimization. And we recommend evaluating your workloads across all five pillars. But since the focus today is really on security, we're gonna focus on the security pillar. The security pillar that is part of the broader framework we see here, um, and it should be used to evaluate all types of workloads running on AWS. However, there is often a need to include additional considerations for specific domains like machine learning and analytics, as well as specific industries. So we have another type of paper that you can use in combination with the well-architected framework, which are called lens white papers. And these lens white papers build on that broader framework by including additional considerations that are really specific to a domain, like we talked about machine learning, analytics, IoT, or they're specific to an industry like financial services. So you can use the broader framework in addition to the lens white papers to regularly evaluate your workloads against AWS best practices and recommendations. In 2020, we released new lenses for analytics as well as machine learning. And these can be used in addition to that broader framework to cover aspects that are unique to the domain. So each of the lens white papers has the exact same structure in terms of the pillars that it covers. Um, with some additional aspects that are really specific to that technology domain or industry. So evaluating for evaluating your machine learning workloads against AWS best practices, we recommend you utilize both the, both the broader framework as well as the lens in its entirety. But as you can see, the machine learning lens also has a security pillar, which includes considerations and best practices related to security for machine learning workloads on AWS. The AWS Well Architected tool, which is available inside your AWS console, can be used for that broader AWS Well Architected framework. But the machine learning lens is not yet included inside that tool. So for now, you can download the lens through in PDF format, HTML, or even on your Kindle device, and use that to help evaluate the unique aspects to machine learning for your workloads. So the machine learning white paper was announced in 2020. But let's dive into some of the more service specific announcements in the areas of security. We'll cover these across the categories of identity and access management, detection, infrastructure protection, and data protection. And for each of these categories, we'll first cover a few key considerations that align with the well-architected framework to highlight some of the existing service features that you may not be aware of that can still be helpful in securing your machine learning workloads. And then we'll dive into a few announcements in each of these categories that can help you building secure and audit-ready machine learning workloads. First, we'll start with identity and access management. And this isn't intended to be a comprehensive list of considerations under identity and access management within the well-architected framework. But we'll try to highlight a few examples here, starting with defining permissions guardrails. A common question we get from customers is around governance and having a solution in place to ensure that the right people have access to the right resources under the right conditions. AWS recommends separating workloads using accounts and managing those accounts using AWS organizations. 
With AWS organizations, you can also set up common controls across accounts through the use of service control policies. Service control policies allow you to set up permission guardrails by defining the maximum available permissions for IAM entities within an account. And these guardrails apply to all IAM entities in the account, including users, roles, and even the account root user. So now let's move on to granting least privilege access using an example with Amazon SageMaker and AWS Identity and Access Management. SageMaker provides several mechanisms for configuring and implementing fine-grained policies, limiting access to specific resources, as well as limiting access to the specific resources under specific conditions. So let's take a look at this example here. So first we have our service-specific resource, which is a notebook instance. Next, we have a set of service-specific actions that enable you to allow or deny access to an API operation or CLI command. So in this case, the action is create pre-signed notebook instance URI, which is essentially allowing you to connect to your notebook instance from your browser. But you can additionally add a set of condition keys on top of this that allow you to further refine the conditions under which this policy applies. So in this case, we're using a condition key based on a project tab tag that's assigned to this notebook instance. So in this case, Bob only has access to the notebook or notebooks that are part of the work being done with project B. So this combination of service specific resources, actions and condition keys allow you to get very fine grain access control. So now that we've covered a few of the common considerations inside the, this particular well architected category using some examples of existing capabilities, let's talk about some of the new announcements from 2020. OpenID Connect support or OpenID Connect support was added for Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth and Amazon Augmented AI. Ground Truth is our fully managed labeling service that makes it easy to build highly accurate training data sets using a combination of human labelers as well as automatic annotation capabilities. Augmented AI is an AWS service that allows you to build workloads for human in the loop reviews. Each of these two services support private workforces where you can designate human reviewers or human labelers. With the addition of OpenID Connect, you can now authenticate and manage your workers using your own identity provider, which simplifies your identity and access management. Another announcement is related to, uh, that's related to identity and access management is around one of our AI services that sits at the top of that machine layer stack. Amazon Kendra provides an intelligent search service powered by machine learning, allowing you to centralize your knowledge sources into um, centralize your knowledge sources and perform accurate search. In November, user tokens were actually added for secure search capabilities. So with this new capability, uh, performing access-based filtered searches in Amazon Kendra is now greatly simplified. So customers can now securely pass user access information in the query payload instead of using attribute filters to accomplish this. By leveraging this, this feature, Amazon Kendra can validate the token information and automatically apply it to the search results for accurate and secure based filtering. Now that we've covered some of the existing and new capabilities within identity and access management, let's move on to the next category of detection. <clears throat> so detection enables you to identify a potential misconfiguration, threat, or unexpected behavior. It's an essential part of the security lifecycle for all workloads, including machine learning workloads. Detection controls can be used to support a quality process, a legal or compliance obligation, and for threat de no. <coughs> Sorry, had a hack. I'll start new on the slide. Well, that was charming. Detection enables you to identify potential security misconfigurations, threats, or unexpected behaviors. It's an essential part of the security lifecycle for all workloads, including machine learning workloads. Detection controls can be used to support a quality process, a legal or compliance obligation, and for threat identification and response efforts. There are different types of detection mechanisms for machine learning, and the implementations can really kind of vary depending on the service and where it sits in that overall stack. But we'll cover a few examples that weren't new in 2020, but they're still good examples of detection capabilities that you may not be aware of and you can take advantage of. 
But then we'll also cover a few new exciting services and capabilities in this area that were announced at reInvent. Again, this isn't intended to be a comprehensive list of considerations under detection, but we'll highlight a few examples here, starting with, <coughs> oh my gosh, sorry. I have a nice dry hat coming. I will start over on this slide. Hopefully that's still good. I see a mute button though on my face. I'm taking notes on this side. Okay. So if you start, so you if you just feel it, just keep rolling and okay. just keep going and don't worry about it. Cool. Like okay. Notes and kind of like. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> And I can still go ahead, right? There's a little mute mic button on me, but. Um, I hear you. Hold on. Let me double okay. check. Toggle output audio. There it is. Okay. Again, this isn't intended to be a comprehensive. Si com <laughs> Again, this isn't intended to be a comprehensive list of considerations under detection, but. We'll highlight a few examples here, starting with centralizing the management of your resource configuration. So AWS Catalog allows customers to create and manage a catalog of IT services that are approved for use on AWS. So one example use case here that's specific to machine learning is having the ability to create governed data science sandboxes that still allow for that innovation and model building activities, but also ensures that the underlying AWS resources are, creating, are created according to best practices, such as using centralized logging, um, practicing encryption at rest, and having that fine-grained access control in place. So as an example, let's say you have a data scientist and they need access to a SageMaker notebook, as well as an S3 bucket for their model building activities. Using Service Catalog, you can create a standard approved service configuration that can then be used to automatically provision those resources while still ensuring key security configurations are in place, such as those encrypted storage volumes for that notebook instance, or having making sure that S3 bucket is also encrypted as well. So then this actual same pattern can be used and made available for other data scientists that have that same need. So this approach of using the central catalog also ensures consistency in your environment configurations as well. Our next consideration involves continuous compliance. So once our resources are provisioned, we want to implement controls that allow us to detect and remediate unexpected changes to those resource configurations, especially those resource changes that have security implications attached to them. And there's many ways to accomplish this, especially when we're looking at defense in depth. But one control that can be implemented is through AWS Config. There are many ways that AWS can work, but AWS Config as a Service enables you to assess, audit, and evaluate the configurations of your AWS resources. AWS has built-in rules that you can use, as well as the ability to create your own custom rules on top of that. In this example we see here, we'll see some of the built-in rules for SageMaker that provide visibility into non-compliant configurations, such as a notebook that's not using a KMS key for encryption for data at rest. You can then use AWS Config to either set up manual or automatic remediations from these non-compliant configurations. So again, these aren't new capabilities, but we provide examples of existing capabilities for detection to consider for your own work learning workloads if you're not using them today. But let's now move on to some of the new reInvent announcements that apply to the category of detection. First, we have Amazon SageMaker Clarify, which was released at reInvent, and it was developed to provide machine learning developers greater visibility into their training data and models so they can identify and limit bias, as well as explain predictions. So Clarify detects potential bias during data preparation, after model training, and in your deployed model by examining attributes that you specify. So for instance, you can check that for bias related to age inside your initial data set, or in your trained model and receive detailed reports that quantify the different types of possible bias. Clarify also includes feature importance um, that helps you explain model predictions and produce reports that can be used to support internal requirement, requirements or to identify issues with your model to, so that you can take the right actions and steps to correct that. In terms of security, 
Clarify offers benefits for both internal reporting and compliance as well as regulatory compliance. So for interning, internal reporting and compliance, many data scientists and teams are required to explain their machine learning models to internal stakeholders such as internal auditors or internal compliance teams. To help with this, Clarify can provide data science teams with a graph of feature importance and help quantify potential bias in their machine learning models or even the data that was used to train it. So this information that's provided can be used for internal compliance or to support any of those internal requirements. But for regulatory requirements, regulations such as the Equal Credit Opportunity Act or the Fairness in Housing Act may require companies to be able to actually explain the financial decisions in steps around their model risk management. So to help with this, Clarify can help flag any potential bias in the initial data or in the model after training, and it can also help explain model features contributed to the most or contributing most to the machine learning models predictions. Let's pivot now to another service that was released that makes it easier to ensure end-to-end -end auditability and traceability. SageMaker Pipelines was released at reInvent as well, and it was released as the first purpose-built, easy-to-use, continuous integration and continuous delivery service for machine learning. With Amazon SageMaker Pipelines, you can create, automate, and manage end-to-end -end machine learning workloads at scale. Pipeline also provides the ability to track lineage of inputs as well as artifacts across the machine learning development lifecycle. A key aspect of detection is the ability to identify potential security misconfigurations. And to do that, you really need that end-to-end -end visibility and traceability. So Pipelines makes it easy to track the data, code, configuration that was used to build a model, the actual model artifact itself, as well as key metrics that are related to that model. You can also customize your pipelines to integrate and automate some of your own custom security quality gates, such as container image scans. So to wrap up detection, we'll cover another service that had some new features added as well, and that is Amazon SageMaker Model Monitor. So after that model gets deployed into production, the fun doesn't stop there, right? So you need to make sure that that model doesn't degrade over time. And to proactively address this problem, it's critical to continuously monitor that model performance in production. The continuous monitoring of production models allows you to identify the right time and frequency to retrain, but it can also provide a signal of unexpected behavior to alert on. Amazon SageMaker Model Monitor helps maintain high quality machine learning models by detecting model and data drift in real time, sending you alerts that you can then take immediate action on. Now the data quality monitor actually existed prior to reInvent, but these three additional monitoring types were actually added with reInvent, including model quality, bias drift, and feature attribution drift. So we covered a lot inside detection, but let's now move on to infrastructure protection. Infrastructure protection ensures that our resources like network and compute are protected against potential vulnerabilities, as well as unintended and unauthorized access. One key consideration in this category is network isolation and protection. In this particular example, we're showing a SageMaker batch transform job, but the same is going to apply to SageMaker processing jobs, training jobs, and hosted endpoints inside SageMaker. You can configure these features within Amazon SageMaker to take advantage of network isolation and protection using the capabilities that have already kind of existed for a while. But in this case, we configured our batch transform job using built-in VPC, VPC support and network isolation. So using a VPC helps protect your model containers and data because you can configure the VPC so that it's not connected to the internet. And using a VPC ensures that your network traffic does not traverse the internet and also allows you to monitor all network traffic through the use of VPC flow logs. Also, in the case of batch transform, which accepts batch data on input from S3 and then provides those batch predictions back out to S3, using a VPC combined with an S3 VPC endpoint ensures that that traffic does not traverse the internet as well, providing an additional control in network protection and isolation for that batch transform job. Let's cover a few new announcements in the area of infrastructure protection. In 2020, we announced AWS Private Link for multiple AI services and then capabilities within those AI services. Again, this allows for that private connectivity between those AI services and the resources within your VPC. 
Second, we also announced VPC support for Amazon SageMaker Studio. Studio is SageMaker's fully managed integrated development environment and Studio Notebooks are, they're actually internet enabled by default so that you can download software packages, libraries, data sets, and sample notebooks um, for customizing your machine learning development environment. However, access to the internet can open an avenue for unintended download of malicious code or unauthorized access to your systems. So you can now choose to launch SageMaker Studio inside your VPC to control network access to Studio Notebooks. When launched inside a VPC, the SageMaker Studio Notebooks can be configured without direct internet access. So in this case, all notebook traffic is securely restricted to only your VPC. This is also useful when you want to connect Studio Notebooks to other AWS resources such as databases and code repositories hosted inside your VPC. Let's now wrap up with data protection. Data protection is a key security consideration and it typically includes approaches such as data classification as well as encryption for data in transit as well as at rest. Again, we'll start with an existing capability in this area followed by a new announcement in 2020. Both AI and ML services offer built-in encryption capabilities, either by default or through simple configurations that customers can take advantage of. So this example that's shown here is Amazon SageMaker again, where by default, all inter-container traffic and API traffic is encrypted in transit. Then SageMaker also offers the ability to easily configure encryption for the storage that's attached to your compute as well. This includes resources like notebooks, processing jobs, training jobs, as well as hosted endpoints. In addition, S3 offers built-in capabilities to easily configure encryption for data at rest as well. All of these capabilities um, already previously existed and they allow for customers to protect both their data at rest as well as in transit. Let's now dive into the announcements for 2020. One of the um, updates for data protection in 2020 was related to our AI services. Amazon Tra Transcribe is an automatic speech recognition service that it makes it easy for AWS customers to add speech to text capabilities in their applications. A popular use case for Transcribe is automatic transcription of customer calls, so like in a call center type of an environment. And they do this to build data sets for downstream analytics, as well as downstream machine learning models like natural language processing and, and doing things like performing sentiment analysis. However, this also means that any personally identifiable information or PII should be removed typically to protect privacy and comply with local laws and regulations. Early in 2020, Amazon Transcribe announced the capability to automatically remove that sensitive personally identifiable information from your transcription results. So that PII removed includes things like social security number, credit card number, name, email, um, mailing address. And that PII redaction enables contact centers to review and share transcripts to improve those customer service interactions and experiences, or also to coach agents and discover new business opportunities while maintaining their standards for handling PII information. So we've covered some of the capabilities that existed prior to 2020 that can help in securing your machine learning workloads, as well as some of the newer capabilities announced across the categories of identity and access management, detection, infrastructure protection, and data protection. So let's now move on to what's next. Customers have been able to benefit from new and existing security controls to continue to add defense and depth to their machine learning workloads on AWS. But what's next? So looking ahead, AWS is committed to continuing to understand where we can help our customers by adding additional easy to use security features to keep workloads protected using a defense in depth strategy. Second, for our AI and ML services, we will continue to abstract complexity away from data scientists and machine learning developers through managed services, as well as advanced easy to use security features. Before we wrap up, I know we covered a lot in 30 minutes, but hopefully you were able to take away a few services or features that you can take advantage of, whether it be new or old. Hopefully you can take advantage of those and apply those to your own machine learning environments. I wanna leave you with a few resources that dive deeper into these topics. First, the AWS Well-Architected Framework, which includes that broader framework that we talked about at the beginning, as well as the machine learning lens, each including that security pillar designed to help you evaluate your machine learning workloads against AWS best practices. 
Second, the AWS security site has a lot of great information and resources if you want to dive deeper into security on AWS. Thank you so much for your time today, and I really hope you enjoyed the rest of your conference. That was great. You nailed it. Fumbled a bit there, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed, like, I, when you restarted a slide and when you took water and stuff, I have all that noted at different time codes. Thank you. Sorry, um, I was talking a lot today, and I have this, like, really charming hack no, that's awesome. nice. Yeah. I, I mean, it's impressive that you can actually, you know, it's so many buzzwords <laughs> that they don't even seem like real sentences. <laughs> it, is, it is. Oh, my gosh. And they're so... Like, and they, you've probably seen this, right? They're so neurotic about how you say certain things. Um, oh, yeah. For this yeah. one, like, I wasn't even comfortable going off script because it's one of those career-limiting moves if you say something wrong. <laughs> the script in the slides? What's that? The script in the slides? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Easy enough. I mean, just the fact that you could read those in sentences.